you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside there's a better life there's a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a weight maker if you need freedom saving he's a prison shaking savior if you got chains he's a chain breaker we've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night we've all find ourselves worn out from the same old fight we've all run to things we know just ain't right when there's a better life there's a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a weight maker if you need freedom save it he's a prison shaking savior if you got chains he's chain breaker If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, you can feel it somebody testify if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a weight maker if you need freedom save it he's a prison shaking savior if you got chains he's a chain breaker oh if you need freedom save it he's a prison shaking savior if you got chains well he's a chain breaker shepherd you make me lie in fields of green you lead me by the still waters you restore righteousness to me though I walk through the valley I will fear no evil thing for you are with me you comfort me surely goodness love and mercy will follow wherever I go surely goodness love and mercy will follow wherever I go surely will follow wherever I go oh Lord you're my shepherd you make me lie in fields of green you lead me by the still waters you restore righteousness to me though I walk through the valley I will fear no evil thing for you are with me God and you comfort me surely goodness love and mercy 
see will follow wherever I go. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow wherever I go. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow wherever I go. of the Lord forever I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord forever Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow wherever I go. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow wherever I go. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow wherever I go. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, the youth who are attending the National Youth Gathering are having an M&M sale fundraiser. Uh, so be sure and stop by their table today. And if you like M&Ms, get you some. If you don't, pick up some for your friends. Uh, register your talent for the talent show on March the 3rd. Pick up a form from the bulletin board in the main hallway, and you can also sign up on a website and, uh, and find a link on, your, on, a force, on the Facebook page. A spaghetti supper will be served that night at 5, and the show starts at 6. Tickets are on sale today in the atrarium. If you signed up for... Golden Eagles last month, uh, you're asked to please sign up again uh, for this month's Golden Eagles uh, attendance. Uh, the raw, uh, do that on the bulletin board. We now begin our worship service.
shepherds, you draw the hearts of kings. Even as a baby, you were changing everything. You called me to your kingdom before your lips could speak. And even as a baby, you were reaching out for me. And now we are awaiting the day of your return. And every eye will see you as heaven comes to earth. Until the sky is open, until the trumpet sounds, the bride is getting ready, the church is singing out, come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins. Please rise. I've got great news. Christ has forgiven you. Your history doesn't change his love for you. Your records of wrongs doesn't change your place with God. Because of Christ, you are forgiven and set free. So welcome to this place and hear the word of the Lord. We are glad to be here. Lord Jesus, the fishermen were ordinary men, yet you called them to follow you. We are ordinary people, mothers and fathers, laborers and professionals, students and children. And we know you've called us to pick up our crosses and follow you. We ask for courage to be your disciples, for boldness to share the good news, and for grace to forgive others as we've been forgiven by you. It's only by your Holy Spirit that we can accomplish your will and calling. Help us, O Lord. We pray this in the name of your Lord. Amen. At this time we confess, because your word commands us to do it, we confess our sins now to you, forgiving Savior. We don't deserve your forgiveness, yet you have chosen to extend your love to us through your grace and forgiveness. So as you freely give this precious gift to us, we accept your forgiveness we follow you into holiness, light, and freedom. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year of King Uzziah, died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal, and he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? and who will go with us? Then I said, here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 12 through 20. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifest manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. 
Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel as found in Luke chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. 
And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish. And their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Maybe see. to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know the faith of the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood. Faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that He is with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our risen Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May he open up our hearts and word, minds to his word. Amen. Our text for this day is the Old Testament reading, as you find printed in your worship service in Isaiah chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, in Christ we live in a marvelous age of technology. When we think of all the things we can do uh, and what we have, it's, it's just fantastic. When you think to the past, there were times even for our great-grandparents when they had no uh, furnace in their home, no running water in their home, no telephones. They traveled by horse and buggy or by horse or walking or Riding a bicycle, maybe. They had to go to the bathroom outside for there's no running water or bathroom in the house. And now we look at today. The young people can't really fathom the kind of life that those people had. Because we live in homes that's got air conditioning and heat. We have bathrooms in the house, running water in the house. We get in cars that have air conditioning and uh, heat. And the list could go on and on. But even though the ages have changed and things have changed, there's one thing that has never, ever changed in regards to the past and in regards to the present. And that's the sinfulness of mankind. Isaiah lived in a day when the government was corrupt. Their officials were living in luxury. Their life was easy. They didn't do what was good always for the people, but what was self-serving. And God and his word was completely ignored. In fact, they chose to worship the false gods of their neighbors and do that which was evil in the sight of God. Most of the people even today in serving in government, it seems that they're involved in corruption, self-seeking, and they're not always concerned about what is best for the people, but what they think is right. And there is even opposition today in the government in regards to God and his word. That has not seemed to change at all. And it was during a time like this that Isaiah had this vision. And in that vision he has a message that he needs to go and proclaim God's judgment against God's chosen people who had wandered away from God, to tell them that they would be taken off into captivity, they would be in exile. And God did not want that to happen because he disliked them, but it was to help them to see their sin and come to their senses and realize that God, he, their God, is the only God. He acts, as you read the Old Testament, he refers to them as his wife, as his bride, and they were guilty of spiritual adultery because they became involved with other gods. And Isaiah experienced a vision. It was awesome, but yet it was fearful. He said, I saw the Lord setting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And seeing God in this vision and hearing those words, Holy, 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 like Moses and Gideon, he was frightened because he knew that no one could see God and live. 
He instantly became aware of his total sinfulness, his unworthiness to be in the presence of God who demands absolute perfection. That you can't sin not even one little iota or dot. You must be absolutely holy and perfect. And he said, woe is me. I am a man of unclean lips living among a people of unclean lips. For I, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And everything looked bad for a moment. But then things changed. Isaiah said, one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, behold... This has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for. In essence, that angel was announcing to Isaiah something that had not taken place yet, but was going to take place through Jesus Christ, who would be the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. And in those words, it was very obvious Isaiah knew that he himself could not make himself presentable to God and acceptable to God, but it was God who made him acceptable and worthy to enter into his holy presence. God wants all of his creation to know that his judgment against sin and that he does have a judgment against all sin. But he also wants his creation to know that he loves them and that he cares about them. That they're very important to him. And that if they repent, they will receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ, who is the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the world. Well, Isaiah, having been forgiven and being very thankful for what God had done, he heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And as we think of those words of God speaking, it's, it's God who is speaking. And it's interesting. It says, Whom shall I, that singular, send? And he says, Who will go for us? Referring to the fact that he, God, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in thankfulness for forgiveness, for that new life he had in Christ, he said, here am I, send me. And God said, go and say to the people, that is, go and proclaim the message that I give you. It is a message that carries harsh words in God's judgment against all sin. But it will be a message also that offers them hope and forgiveness. In the opening chapter of the book of Isaiah, God said to these very same people, the Israelites, come, let us reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as wool. Jesus, when he came into the world, called others to go and proclaim his message. A message that included the law to help people to see their sin and a message of God's grace and forgiveness in Christ. And in the gospel reading, we hear about him calling Peter and the others to come follow him, for they would be fishers of men. Well, what about us? God has called each one of us to be his messengers, to speak of the hope that is ours in Christ Jesus. Just as Isaiah was cleansed, as the coal was tough, put, up, put upon his lips, so our lives have been cleansed. When we were baptized into Jesus, we were baptized into his death and resurrection Faith was worked in our hearts. We became God's children. And from that point on, 
we were to live as his children. And that involves sharing the message of hope and life that comes alone through Jesus Christ. He made us new people. He made our lives holy. In other words, we became saints. We didn't make ourselves saints, but as we stand before God each and every day, we stand holy and perfect, for he looks at us through Jesus. But even though we are saints before God in this world, we still have to deal with that issue called sin. We are tempted by the unholy three, the devil, the world, and our flesh. And so often we find ourselves yielding to those temptations. We want to do things our way. We want to do that which pleases us and fulfill the desires of our flesh. We want to be liked by all people, no matter who they are. And we will even say and do things wrong to be with the in crowd. But God condemns that. For he rescued us from sin, not to live in sin, but that we might turn away from it. But we can't do that on our own. And he assures us that we don't have to do that on our own. For he says, I am with you always. And he comes to us through his word. He comes to us through the sacrament. And he is the one who enables our faith to grow and us to live a sanctified life. Or our, you might say a sanitized life. One that there, we are pure and holy in our way of living. Because the blood of Jesus has cleansed us. When you feel down, when, like Isaiah, he said, woe is me. When you feel guilt and shame. When you wonder whether you can be forgiven. As you come to God's house, you hear his messenger say to you. Be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. For the blood of Jesus cleanses of all sin. And being forgiven with joy and thankfulness in our hearts. We hear God's message to us. Whom shall we send? And may our answer be, here am I. Send me. Knowing that God will speak the words through us as we trust him. To God be the glory. Great things he has done, so loved he the world. He gave us his son. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now receive our tithes and offerings to the Lord.
In our prayers, when I say, Lord, have mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal God, you are holy and mighty and great in the majesty of your glory. As once you cleansed the guilty lips of Isaiah and sent him forth to call your people to repentance and to speak hope in your name, cleanse us and send us forth with your word that many may hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Glorious Father, in your great mercy, you sent forth your Son to atone for the sins of the whole world. And he established a church by his blood. Renew your church and strengthen the resolve of your people in difficult and dangerous times, that they may be faithful in every circumstance. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, merciful Lord, you have called your pastors and missionaries to become fishers of men by proclaiming the whole counsel of your word. Guard them in their task and give them courage and zeal. Bless us through their faithful preaching of your law and gospel that we may be set free, from, uh, free through forgiveness to serve you with our whole heart, mind, body, and strength, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Lord. Through your word preached and taught, you equip the people for fulfillment in their baptismal vocations. Bless especially the young men that they may hear your call to the pastoral office and sustain those who are now being trained for his holy calling. Bless the young women that they may hear your call to be deaconess, teachers, directors of Christian education, or to serve as they are able to do the noble work of your kingdom and sustain those now being educated for these paths. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, all things are yours and all authority has its source in you. Bless us with good leaders in government and enable us to be good citizens, both working together for the common good of all people. Bring your peace to bear where war, violence, and terrorism threaten and protect those who defend us. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, as your Son bestowed the healing gifts of your grace, so bestow upon the sick, the suffering, the wounded in spirit, and the dying, the fullness of your grace. Especially do we pray on behalf of uh, Pastor Gall. We ask that you continue to give strength to him. Be with Bev Kester, who had hip surgery, and bring healing. Be with Nancy Saltweedle Wolf. And be with Jerry Nickham, who is hospital at St. John's in Springfield in the ICU. Be with Jared Bierman. Be with Louise Gibbons, a hospice patient, mother of Jim Gibbons. Be with Sean Borland. We ask that you would also be with all others who are experiencing various kinds of afflictions and illnesses in their life or the flu. Uh, we ask that you would lay your healing hand upon them. And we would also ask that you would be with those who are grieving the death of John uh, Blevernick, uh, the brother-in-law of Norma Wolf Lansing. Uh, we ask that you would give comfort to the family and assure them of your abiding presence. Uh, we commend them to your care. Give to the suffering relief and sick a healing according to your will and give them patience under the burdens of their afflictions until the day when we shall no more be troubled by the weaknesses of flesh and so see our bodies made new in Christ's own glorious flesh in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. And almighty and gracious Lord, we give thanks unto you in that you have blessed uh, Amanda and Ryan Riemann, the gift of a healthy baby daughter, Tyler Marie, and she is the granddaughter of Jim and Rosie Gibbons. We thank you for this wonderful gift that you have given them and made the mother and child grow in health and strength and look forward to the time of the child's baptism. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Lord, though we are sinners, you have granted us new birth in baptism and have forgiven our sins by this grace bestowed, enable us to worthily receive his most precious body and blood in this sacrament. Nourish us for your kingdom 
and sustain us in this faith and life until we feast together on high with the blessed apostles, prophets, saints, and all who died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And whatever else we have on our hearts and minds, we bring to you in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We gather together at the Lord's table. We remember the burden of death he carried, the sacrifice he made for all, and the powerful resurrection that shook the gates of hell. We break the bread, the Lord's broken body, and we drink this cup, the Lord's blood, and proclaim his death until his glorious return. He will come again one day, and every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen and hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Our uh, Lord's table is now being served. You may be seated.
and this true blood strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life eternal. Go in his peace. Have courage and take heart. The Lord will return. Forgive as you have been forgiven and follow Jesus wholeheartedly. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, also his messengers, greet one another with the peace of Christ. <laughs>